Hi, my name is Bernard Ang. In this video, I would like to show you how to test a DC to DC converter using the Pathway Benchview software and the data acquisition hardware system. Shown here is a typical DC to DC buck converter. It uses an SD microelectronics L4975A. In this schematic, which comes almost directly from the data sheet, 48 volts in and 14 volts out. It is slightly adjustable on the output using the RV1 variable resistor. This is what we are going to configure. We have a data acquisition device with six channels on a switch card. There's a DC power supply feeding voltage in and electronic load to apply different load currents to the output. We will use a thermocouple on the device to monitor its temperature. The 0 0.005 ohm resistors allow us to take a differential measurement across those and then use Ohm's law to calculate the input and output current. The AC voltage measurement will show us to do a ripple voltage test on the output. So here's the hardware. Keysight offers many DC power supply options. This is one of we will use, an E36200 series power supply. And for the electronic load, again, Keysight has several options. We have picked the E30000 series electronic load for this test. The data acquisition hardware is a DAC970A or DAC973A. Both of these have three slots in the back with a choice of modules. These are the modules available. As you can see, none has current rating higher than 1M. So we cannot use these switch cards directly in line with the input or output supply or load because the current would exceed the rating of the switches. That's why we use a shunt resistor in, on the input and uh, output and use Ohm's law to calculate the current rather than measure it directly. The next step is to fire up bench view. This is what the bench view data application looks like when it starts up. We have to define the channels that we want to scan. If you recall from the block diagram a little earlier, we have channels 201 through 206. We can assign them names such as case temperature, input current, and so on. We can also select the function, the range, and the resolution and apply scaling factor and alarms if needed. In this case, we are using an alarm on the case temperature. If the temperature gets above 80 degrees Celsius, it will generate an alarm. We can choose from several types of alarms, such as an email or a computer beep or a dot on the graph. Of particular note in the scaling factor, notice that channels 202 and 203 are measuring DC voltage, but we want them to be input current and output current. So using Ohm's law, we will multiply the voltage by 200 which is 1 over 0 0.005 and convert the output into amps. We also have computed channels here, input power, output power, and efficiency. In the first case, we are measuring input power. We are going to multiply channel 204 by 202 to calculate wattage. And we can do that for both the input and the output. There's also an efficiency calculation. We will use two computed channels and divide output power, which is computed by input power, which is also computed, convert the output to percent and scale it by a factor of 100 so that the result comes out in percent. The next step is to set up the data log settings. For example, how you want to start how you want to stop and timing between measurements. Next, we'll go to the graphics setup tab to look at charts for our measurements. 
Many are available, including strip charts, XY charts, histograms, tags, data grids, and digital readouts. You can even add a background image if you want. All right, so here's an example of a strip chart. We have selected two y-axis here, temperature on the left and volts DC on the right. We assign those to channels 201, 204, and 205. Each gadget has a set of properties that vary depending on the type of gadget. In this case, the strip chart properties allow us to show the alarm, show the trace thickness, pick our units, set units per division, and offsets, and so on. Here's what our run will look like when we apply power and then change the load current, as you can see with the red graph on the right. Now let's look at the two charts at the bottom. The left is an XY chart that we set up for input versus output power. The other is a strip chart showing efficiency versus time. So as the load current changes, you can see the efficiency of the part rises. We can also apply annotation to remind us where we change load current. And finally, we can export our data by simply clicking the export button. This will bring up a choice of export formats, in this case, Excel, and we can save the data. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.